All right, hey guys. Uh, so Phil reached out to me. Um, some military guys have reached out to him about the tripod videos they just put out recently, um, and whether or not um, they should be ditching their slings, dropping their bipods, and basically um, what can they do to reach the same level of stability? Because we're issued tripods in the military, so it is not a really right stuff. It's not a two vets. It's not as tall. It's not as stable. So basically, their issue is you can't get high enough to reach that proper body positioning like you see in the videos, uh, mainly the one that Kaylin put out where it's, you know, certain arm length, you know, hips under the shoulders, all that stuff. Um, they can't do that, all right? We can't do that. Um, so I'm gonna hit four four videos and four positions on standing, uh, specifically going over four techniques, right? So it's gonna be uh, the clip-in technique because I was specifically asked about whether or not they should ditch the sling and the bipods. Bipods, I don't think you would ever need to ditch. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, we can get into that a little bit later. Um, and then I'm going to go over, over under the shoulder, right? Where the sling is still clipped into the rifle and then throttling at the neck with the uh, sling still clipped in the rifle and the throttling at the leg, which the sling will still be clipped into the rifle. Um, just to show a couple different techniques. The big thing to understand is, and you'll see in my impacts, um, training, right? If we don't train to these positions, we're never going to be good at them. Um, you can see by my impacts, which ones I'm more comfortable with and trained to and which ones I'm not. Uh, cause obviously I have a very specific one that I prefer and that's the one that I use the most, which is why my shock groups will be the best. Um, and then we'll go over pros and cons of each, you know, issues that we have and things that we need to understand that are going to be, had to be th thought about or things we're going to have to try and mitigate due to the fact that, uh, we are using a inferior tripod, uh, and each technique, uh, adds pressure to the gun in different manners. All right. So here we go. All right, so in this first video, it's basically me setting up from the beginning, right? Uh, still trying to achieve that six inches from the jugular notch. Um, to start, just because I want to show that that's kind of where we want to be. Uh, usually, I'll even go as low as a full fist, and it'll be a little bit lower than I like. But that also will give me more stability because I'm throwing that neck up there, which is causing the neck itself. It's just it's not stable enough. It's not the same as three legs to the uh, to a hog saddle straight. Um, straight connected so you'll see that uh, the that's going to increase wobble zone it's going to cause some issues um, so again this is me just clipping in uh, i'm using a custom rifle because obviously i can't just pull an armor rifle and just go to whatever range i want um, so i did the best that i could to get it as close as possible um, to the same same setup that i could with with what i have but hopefully it still gets the point across All right, so this first technique is gonna be uh, the clip-in technique. So I'm still gonna clip my, my swing swivels to the left, which is gonna cause a left pull in the rifle on a cant, which I'll have to combat the whole time. I'll go through the opposite side of the center post um, to kind of counterbalance it. I don't know how well it works, but it makes sense to me. Uh, different guys have different opinions. Clip into the belt. Now I go and clip in, uh, not super tight to where the sling is now controlling me, but to where I'm still able to get comfortably behind the rifle and as neutral as possible. Okay, um, but you'll see here in a second that there's still gonna be some issues as far as my wobble zone is gonna be kind of all over the place. Again, I don't train to it that much. Uh, and usually what'll happen if I have that issue is I'm just gonna drop the neck lower. I don't do that in this video um, because I'm specifically trying to show um, how to get to a certain position and how you can train to it. Again, this hog saddle and my rifle combo isn't the best, so it still does slightly cause some issues as far as gripping the rifle, um, but you wouldn't have that with an issued rifle for the most part. Okay, so we can see here, uh, my wobble zone isn't 100% great. Uh, I'm shooting at one MOI dots, uh, which is not obviously something we'd be shooting at as far as in a uh, realistic combat zone or something like that for the military guys, but it shows you how stable you can get uh, at 100 yards. You know, you're still gonna hit the target, but again, you'll see in the shot group here shortly, uh, that it's going to be a little bit all over the place. All right, so you see here, top left, uh, pretty big. It's like a three MOA group. Uh, I'm not super trained to it. My first shot went well. My second two did not go so hot. Um, but again, I'm fighting that pull from the rifle sling being clipped in on the left side and trying to camp my rifle off. All right, so on this one, I'm gonna relock back in. I'm not gonna change anything with the tripod. I'm just uh, resetting up, um, doing the 100,000 spin because I'm trying to get that thing as tight as possible to clamp in properly, which again, just 
uh, custom rifle issues, not a uh, not a, not big, as big of an issue for uh, the issued rifles. And then I'm going to set the sling up to where I can over under it as if I were carrying it on patrol, uh, not normally something I would do, but in the event that I had to take a shot and then move, I would want to use that sling to retain the rifle, all right, because that's the purpose of it. Um, so once I get it all set up, I'm going to swim under it. Uh, I'll go over my head and then bring my non-firing arm under it. So that way I can cinch it down, not excessively tight to cause it to pull to the left as much as possible. Um, but I can still use that and my forearm to add some tension as I need it um, if my wobbles is getting too wild. All right, and we'll see here. Uh, again, a little bit more stable. That's because I'm more trained to this style of shooting because usually I shoot in full gear. Um, so this is something that makes more sense to me uh, in my application. All right, so we look at the shot groups. Like I said, they're a little bit high, about a half a mil to a mil high, but I have more right and left. Um, but again, if that's something I know, I can train to that as far as where I aim, shot placement, and reticle placement can can mitigate that. Again, it's only 100 yards, so it's not a, it's not a true um, depiction of what's really going to happen downrange. So from here, I'm going to go with uh, throttling the neck, and we'll see that with throttling the neck, you can go forward uh, with a forward twist or a rear twist i think this one i'm going to do a forward twist um making sure that the thing is not too tight so i loosened it up a little bit just to give me a little bit more play because again i want to be able to have enough of a bite so i can actually throttle uh, off and on as i need um still trying to maintain that same position like i said i haven't adjusted the head or anything at all and we'll see here um these shot groups are a little bit more vertical, but it's because I'm, it's the tension on the sling is making it go straight down, um, right to the neck, as opposed to or it's weaving through the legs and causing a little bit more torque. So as you can see, the wobble zone felt a lot better. Uh, it was just up and down. I think I threw that one shot real high. Um, it was a couple days ago, so I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but generally, my shot groups are closer to center where I'm aiming. Uh, I'm a I'm a big proponent of the torque method. That's just me, but it's also because it applies to uh, being able to get in position and out of position much faster. So I'm not clipping into anything and anchoring myself down to my system. So this one, it's going to be the biting into the leg or torquing the leg. Uh, same thing, give myself enough real estate so I can material so I can torque properly. Uh, then getting on target, you'll see this one I'm actually a lot more trained to um, because I'm also used to using multiple tripods. So a lot of times I have tripods where I don't need to raise the neck. Uh, so I don't have to stretch out because I have shorter arms. So for me, with this one, with my length of arm, the, the leg works a lot better because I don't have to blade my body and do anything weird to compensate for uh, my physical uh, defects, I guess you could say. All right, and you'll see here, we've got a decent wobble zone. It's a lot better. It's staying much closer to that one MOA dot. Again, normally we would do this at like a two MOA uh, circle. 
Um, but this is what I had set up and I like to aim small. Uh, I figure it makes it harder, it makes me try a little bit more and put better shot groups out there. All right, so we'll see here in a second. You see that shot group is much tighter. I had two stacked. That was my first and third. Pulled that second one a little bit high <clears throat> and to the right. Uh, but overall, that's when I trained to. So you can see the performance on that one is much better. So, all right, guys, like I said, it's just a quick video. If you have any more questions, obviously just hit me up directly. I can put together some more stuff now that I have a trigger cam and figure out how to work my phone and get all the stuff hooked up to the computer. Um, I can make things a little bit more specific to something that somebody needs specifically. I intend on putting some more stuff out like this. Um, again, it's just a caveat on to what Phil and Kalen put out um, specifically for the military and law enforcement guys because we're working with uh, not as high quality equipment because it costs money, right? These bush nails probably cost $200 um, as opposed to a really right stuff um, at market value. I think it's like 1500, the cheapest is like 1200 that I've seen um, pre-discount, you know? Um, so anyways, like I said, if you have any other questions, please hit me up uh, and we'll make it work. All right.